<sighs> Tekken Revolution. It's a sad day, as the game has finally come to an end. You know, I've been playing the game for years now, and despite, you know, all the crazy stuff that really goes on the game, I really, really enjoyed the game. So, with that in mind, I hope you guys enjoyed this little montage that I made for it. Nope. Fuck this game! The amount of crap that I've had to part with just to be able to make more videos for Tech Revolution, especially during the last days of the game coming to an end, I endured a lot of crap and it drove me insane! So what was going to be a nice little Tech Revolution montage video, yeah we missed the game blah blah blah, has now manifested and turned itself into this hate video. So yes, with that in mind, here's a 10 things that I've learned from playing Tech Revolution video. So we're going to take it nice and easy with the first one, which is number 10. This game is a super watered down version of Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Imagine living in a nice big mansion where you have all your furniture, your clothes, you know, all that sort of stuff that builds the house. Tekken Revolution is basically the same thing, but everything stripped out of the house entirely. You just have the frame. That is it. Everything costs money. To look good costs money. To have special effects on your characters costs money. To reset your stats costs money if you really want to do that. But you get the idea. A lot of things cost money. The only thing that doesn't cost money in the game is that stupid little warm up space thing that was in the game that was actually completely useless, to be honest. Well, to me anyway. So, for those who are now not playing Tech Revolution anymore and started off with that game, you know, I, I do feel sorry for you a bit. However, there is still Tekken Tag Tournament 2 that you can play, where everything is practically free in that game. More characters, more stages, well, you know, all that stuff. Everything is in there. You're not exactly forced to go online, but whatever you got away with in Tech Revolution, you're not going to be able to get away with as much on Tag. The only thing that practically made this game stand on its own is having Eliza as a playable character, and that's it. But she's going to be in Tekken 7 anyway, so you guys are going to enjoy her at some point. So as we know, the game has certain stats. You have stats for power, endurance, and vigor. But honestly, who really gave a damn about vigor? Nobody did. Everyone you saw, at least 90% of the players that you played in Tech Revolution, had their power put up to 200 max. Nobody gives a crap about Vigor. It was the most useless stat in that game. It was like, why was it there in the first place? It would have been better if they replaced it with defense. Because at least the amount of crap that people are dishing out to you, you'll be able to hold your own if you had defense. Vigor only increased your critical arts, which lets you do a little bit more damage when performing critical art attacks. Whereas you have power, you can just do that all the time. When you look at the bigger picture, power was basically in effect with all of your moves whereas Vigor was only in effect when you were using specific moves. It was just such a useless stat, and there's a reason why a lot, a lot of people used it. I did a couple of videos where I had 200 Vigor with Eliza, and the rest on her was just 50 power and 50 endurance. 50 power is good enough for anyone. 200 is just overkill. It really is overkill. And I hope this will be the first and last Tekken game will include stupid stats like this so that things like this will never ever occur again oh my gosh i blocked that i blocked that man uh... oh my gosh one fucking combo did you see that as you know with tech revolution it really introduced a lot of new players into the game who knew nothing about it who don't know tekken who don't know the specific characters and how they work What's the first thing they see as soon as they select a character? Yes, they see the notation for the invincible moves and they see the notation for two special arts which people don't really give a crap about. And this is what has really made Tech Revolution the most retarded game of the Tekken series ever. The special arts aka the invincible move. And now that I think about it, I actually don't blame new players for doing that because that's the first move that they see. They don't know about Lightning Screw Uppercut with Kazuya or a Wind God Fist or Hell Lanta, Help Sweeps, nothing like that. What's the first thing they see? Kumokuri, aka the Invincible move. And because of its stupid properties and the way it beats up so many moves, it's become such a dangerous tool at the hands of any player. 
and because of this, special arts encourages bad habits for new players. Because that's the only thing they know how to do. Oh, what's this move? Wow, I've hit my opponent with that like five times already. Maybe I should just keep doing it. And that's how most people who have climbed the ranks have surprisingly been playing. And it works out for them. And of course, if it keeps working for them, they're going to keep using it. But I will say this now, any of those newcomers who have been using these techniques now and do want to go on to Tekken 7, they are in for a rude awakening. So you guys have had your fun now while it's lasted, but sooner or later, you're going to get screwed. Number 7. Special Arts Defies Frame Data It doesn't matter what you know of a character, your trigger happy invincible move opponent can for example whiff an invincible move and you try to go for a punish. Now, whether you're quick or not, they can easily, quickly use another invisible move and it will hit you. The invisible move itself is, is such a mystery because it's able to beat out so many things. It can beat out certain strings, it can beat out certain combos, and if you're fighting a laggy opponent, you are absolutely screwed. In fact, the combination of the invisible move and a Christie opponent, you just can't win. You cannot win. So maybe, for example, if you're slow at punishing, your opponent can just immediately throw an invisible move and you'll get hit for it and sometimes it leaves you scratching your head and then other times you're just like oh that's just part of the game and you get used to that and it's very strange and players become very smart the way they use the invincible move they can use it offensively they can use it defensively and in some strange way shape or form it just hits you it just hits you the move was meant to hit you forget about blocking and trying to punish it sometimes it works and other times you're the one that's screwed when I first looked at Law, fighting game wise and game in history, he's probably the best tribute to Bruce Lee, who's an absolute legend for what he's done. You know, and Lord of Law's moves are inspired by him. The founder of Jeet Kune Do, you know, everybody knows. Bruce Lee is a household name and he's an absolute legend. Now when I look at Law, I don't think those things anymore. I can't help but just roll my eyes and think, oh god, here we go, Dragon Tales all over again. Destroyer, who I brought into a lot of my Tech Revolution videos, knew nothing about the game at all. But if there's one thing that he remember now, it's laws. Yes! Are you laughing now? It's a fucking law! <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm gonna suck, oh, man. Oh yeah, the dragon. No, connect. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Oh my gosh, dragon tail. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> Oh, what a cheap, easy win. Gosh, man! No. For f oh, Look at him! I'm trying to... They can't do this shit anymore! Oh, look at that! They are such a huge joke on this game. They only need two moves to beat you, and that's Dragon Tail and the Invincible move. It's just a 50-50 game for them. There's no real strategy involved unless you count that as one. It's absolutely ridiculous. No DSS required. You don't need to be good with lore. Just spam your Dragon Tails. You can win loads of matches. While the game was active, chances are that you could probably be a new player, get beaten up by lore. Be like, oh, okay, maybe I'll start picking him instead. How did I lose? Oh yeah, that Dragon Tail move that I see in the main menu. Yes. And what else is there? The Invisible move. Yes, I'll use those two, put them together and destroy everyone online. And you'll get away with it. And you'll probably be a true second god. And the worst thing about Dragon Tails is it's a critical arts move. So opponents who put their vigor up with lore would do a hell of a lot of damage. Not that it matters anyway, because that's what the power's there for. And look how you've destroyed many of us today. And the thing about the Dragon Tail move is sometimes it's so quick you can't see it, it just happens. It's only until your opponent uses it a certain number of times that you think, okay, I probably have to duck this that you respond quicker. DSS, what's that? Number five, the RPG experience should be implemented in a different mode. So let's face it, the whole stat idea was an absolute flop and this is the first time that Bandai Namco have actually tried something like this. However, when you look from a different perspective, they should have thought maybe we should try this in an offline mode. I mean, I don't know who came up with the idea and just went, oh, do you know what? Let's put stats in the game and let's make absolutely every single match that players play online unfair. It was kind of a crazy idea. And because of this, the game was basically Tekken on steroids. It was absolutely crazy. If I had a suggestion for Tekken 7 and they do decide to bring Ghost Battle back, why not implement this whole stat experience there? Let's face it, Ghost Battles are extremely boring. The only reason why I did them in tag was to just find out all the ranks and to get the trophies. After that I never touched the mode again, it's absolutely boring. 
but let's say you add stats to that that would you know spice things up a little bit it won't exactly like make it any better but at least all the crap that happens won't be online everything like that stays offline and I don't think anyone will complain about that much number four stats took hacking to the next level now we've probably seen this go on in every Tekken game at least rank wise online when you go into leaderboards and check out the ranks you see people with ridiculous wins like I don't know a thousand to one and you think yes that person's definitely hacked it I think for those who play tag might remember there was actually a hacker with the name Harada my dog which I found absolutely hilarious but I think that one's gone now but the point I'm trying to make is hacking only went as far as just ranks it didn't hurt anyone in any way unless you're one of those players who wanted to have a spot in the top 10 of a specific character now in tech revolution there are no leaderboards and stats are key to winning matches so when you went up against a hacker you were absolutely screwed it was so dirty the way they could just one hit kill you and once it started it became more and more rampant and this really drove people away from the game which is perfectly understandable i mean who wants to get beaten like that you're paying to play not paying to lose and I always used to tell people when you come against a hacker stop playing for the day otherwise you're going to end up losing all of your coins but you have had players who have managed to beat these hackers despite their stats so maybe skill does take a little bit of priority over stats or does it? stats takes priority over skill now it doesn't matter how good you are at Tekken if you've played Tech Revolution you are a liar if you tell me that you've never come across anyone that you've played and you thought how the heck did they get to this level and beat me like this? Simple. Stats. It's stats. There's no arguing with it. I mean, of course, yes, you can have that backed up experience as a Tekken player to be able to pull off many combos and get, you know, huge damage. But to go up against someone who doesn't even know combos at all and you get beaten by them, it kind of makes you feel a little shitty about yourself, doesn't it? That happened to me on many occasions. And it's not like these people can't get better. Yes, it's their first game, but they have access to the internet. If you can play Tech Revolution, then you have access to online. You can learn combos very, very easily. But regardless of that, people are still capable of whooping your ass. All they need is 200 power, a lore, or some form of strategy where they just throw out moves and it, and it beats you. And it's left you scratching your head thinking, how the heck did I lose? And then it'll happen again the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day and the next day, and so on and so forth. You can even say my Zero Stats challenge is a testimony to this. Just watch some of those fights back and you'll see how I got completely destroyed by some of these people. Yes, skill does play a big role in the series, but I really, really struggled with some of these people. And remember, most of them are very inexperienced players. And then you wonder how they reach these high ranks. A match in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 can last up to five minutes. A match in Tekken Revolution can last up to one. You could try as much as you like, but eventually you'd get broken down. So just accept your defeat by a true Tekken God Law Player 200 stat motherfucker. Which brings me to my next point. Number two, rank means nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna take two different sides here. I'm gonna have the competitive side of people who are experienced Tekken players, and I'm gonna have the new players who have just started. So I'm gonna start with the new players. The new players, of course, you've never seen these ranks before, starting from first dan to true Tekken God. And as you're playing your way through the game, you'll notice that you're slowly getting up these ranks. And you're thinking, wow, I'm, I must be doing really well for myself. Maybe you go from first dan to Genbu from the day, and you think, wow, how did I do something like that? You know, I'm, I must be really good. Which I wouldn't take away from you, you know, if you manage to do that, well done. And then when you look at a game like Tekken Tag Tournament 2, where you're trying to do the same thing, from first dan to Genbu, in the day maybe it might take you a week or two longer I don't know depending on how long you play the game but the point I'm trying to make is Tekken Tag Tournament 2 is a much more difficult game compared to Tech Revolution and climbing up ranks is so ridiculously easy it literally means nothing so again to the new players I congratulate you for those ranks that you've managed to reach but I've seen people brag about their ranks like they're the shit Whereas all it was, oh my gosh, it's, I don't even know how to explain it, it's just, actually, okay, I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna be blunt, like, you think you're the shit, but you're not the shit, okay? Rank means absolutely nothing, and if you think you're that much of a badass, let's say you've reached, you know, Yaksa in Tekken Revolution, try and do the same thing on Tag. 
you know, people have always had this argument. It's nothing new there. Oh, ranks mean nothing. Oh, ranks mean this. Ranks means that. But when you compare the two of tag and revolution, that's when you really start to sit down and think, wow, my rank actually means something. It really took me a lot of hard work to reach a specific rank when playing tag. Whereas revolution, I'm sure you guys kind of understand the point. Ranks do not mean anything. It doesn't represent how good you are. It's In fact, it's a false misrepresentation of how good a player is. You can go up against a Tekken Lord on Tech Revolution. And if you're an experienced Tekken player, you'll know, like, maybe, okay, this is a bit dodgy. I don't know how this guy got here doing all of these things that he did, but he managed to get there. And there's nothing you can do about it unless you, I don't know, try to demote them. But there are so many players on that game, you'd hardly get a chance to do that. For players like myself, it's a nice little title to hold. I mean, being Tekken Lord, a rank that I don't think that I'd probably reach in playing Tekken Tag Tournament 2 unless I really invested my heart and soul and time into the game. Nothing is impossible, but when it comes to Tekken, you really need to put a lot of time into that game to be able to reach those higher ranks, which is the point I'm trying to make here. So when I see people on Revolution bragging about their ranks, it, it just kind of makes me laugh because, yeah, rank means nothing. There was an anime that my brother and I used to watch all the time a couple of years ago, and I kid you not, the name of it is called Bo 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 Bo. Yes, you can look that up if you want, but I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're really that curious, I don't know. Go, go check it out. Anyway, my brother and I used to watch this anime, and it actually made no sense. But it was funny. It was funny, but it made no sense at all. Like, you'd watch it, but you wouldn't really understand what's going on, because it was just completely random. But I found it funny nonetheless. Now, my dad watched a couple of episodes with me, and it got to a point where he couldn't watch it anymore because and this is literally what he said to me he said why are you watching this thing it feels like the more i watch this thing with you the lower my iq is dropping and i thought i was absolutely hilarious and i think the way he said that is literally the perfect way to describe my experience on tech revolution number one playing tech revolution decreases overall skill level i kid you not I felt like I was getting dumber and dumber by the day playing this game. I mean, it was all nice and dandy at first, you know, playing the game the first couple of weeks and stuff, getting used to all the bullshit that happens on this game. I was like, oh, ha, ha, yeah, just, just laugh it off. And just gradually as I was playing the game, everything that I started to know or I thought I knew was just slowly being thrown out of the window every single week, month, year that passed by, this thing only started taking effect until the last couple of weeks of Revolution being, you know, available to play. And I realised how badly I was doing. And I can't even blame on lag this time. I wish I could, or maybe a little bit that I can. But on an overall basis, I wasn't punishing properly. It just felt like everything I was doing was completely wrong. The best way to put it is, I wasn't learning anything from my opponents and because I wasn't learning anything from them instead I was learning how to play like them it was that bad and it got to a point where I couldn't play Tech Revolution for at least more than two hours without including Tech and Tag in it you would think that when playing Tag that would be the game that you can play after playing Revolution I had to treat Tag as my warm-up game just to play Revolution now that's saying something because I couldn't mentally prepare myself for all the bullshit that was going to happen on that game. I couldn't play Tech Revolution for longer than two or three hours without playing the bit of tag. It was, it was really that bad. And the reason why I know a fairly good amount of characters on this game was because of all the requests that I was taking like a couple of months back doing certain phases. And every time I tried to learn a new character, I'd always play tag first and learn how to use that character before I go into Revolution and play with them. And that was working fine for me. And after a while, I got really sick of tag, so I stopped playing that, and all I played was Revolution. So over and over again, I kept seeing the same bullshit, the Invincibles, the, the ridiculous damage, you know, just, just the whole thing. That was all I was able to absorb, just the amount of bullshit on that game. I cannot stress it enough, honestly. And during the last couple of days, like I said, as much as I wanted to get a lot of Tech Revolution footage, during the last couple of days, I just realised just how bad it actually was. 
I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm not exactly the best Tekken player out there, but at least I sort of somewhat know the fundamentals of that game. And even that was slowly being thrown out the window. It was like something was being ripped out of me little by little as I was playing the game. It's like everything you knew from Tekken, and then it became, what do I know in Tekken? Nothing. It was, it was that bad. Moves, punishes, with punishes, frame data, all that crap. It's like, what is that when you play Revolution? Let me just beat the crap out of you with pure power and end it as that. And the only thing that will carry me on is combos. And that was it. And on the last day, I thought, no, screw this. I had enough of it. I, I got to that breaking point. Just as the game was ending, I got to that breaking point. I deleted the game and I said, that is enough. I've had enough of this bullshit. Hopefully, this game will never see the light of day ever again. And I pray that there will not be a Tech Revolution 2, because if there was, oh my gosh. No, let's, let's not even think about that. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for me in this video. Like I said, I didn't think I was gonna make it, but I did, who gives a fuck? Do you agree with anything that I said? Of course you don't, because this is the fucking internet. Well, I'll leave the comments below and all that crap and good stuff. But um, yeah, on a more serious note, you know, Tech Revolution was kind of fun to play. You know, it was a nice little break from all the frustration and stuff that's happened on TAG. But now that that's gone, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's over for Tech Revolution for me. So making a montage video wouldn't have made any sense. Because after this video, I still have at least enough to entertain and carry you guys until the release of Tekken 7. So this is definitely the end. I have crap loads of footage to put out. Hope you guys enjoyed it in the future. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Anyway, I'm out. I'm gonna play some tag now and try to restore the skill that I have lost. This is gonna be a very long process. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Have a good one and take care.